1982, Asa Hutchinson was appointed U.S. Attorney for Arkansas and is more than familiar with the working of the federal court system Donald Trump is now facing. The former Arkansas governor is also facing the former president to win the 2024 GOP presidential nomination. And Governor Hutchinson, back on Morning Rush, I think we have our technical issues resolved, so thank you so much for joining us and we hope you can hear us now. <laughs> Absolutely, I can hear you just fine. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. So, um, what you have read of the indictment as a former U.S. Attorney, uh, how strong would you say say this case is against Trump because I, I think when you listen to um, one group of people they say hey this is open and shut this is there's nothing that is questionable about this you listen to another group and they say that this is a hoax this is a political attack um, it's all very personal um, and so those are obviously very two different things so how strong is this case the evidence everything that was listed out in what you've read of the indictment I have reviewed the indictment and it is very strong both factually and legally and uh, this uh, is a worrisome day for Donald Trump and while he tried to turn this into a campaign rally I think he understands the seriousness of this and how he's going to have to face a jury on this question and that's ultimately the determination of the facts <clears throat> you mentioned uh, both sides of the coin uh, the uh, one side says this is selective prosecution well I've tried selective prosecution as a defense and while that might be a moral argument, it's not a good legal argument. And so every defendant is responsible for the acts that he or she committed and uh, is going to have to go to trial on that and you're not going to be able to use somebody else and how they were treated as a defense. And so this is going to develop as a candidate. It looks like it's going to be a long process. And so the question is, is when the trial date's going to be set, when are the motion hearings, when are they going to happen? You're dealing with classified information. That's going to delay things even longer. And so uh, I wonder how this is going to impact and allow us to talk about serious issues in our country that we're very concerned about, from uh, fentanyl that's hurting our country to uh, Social Security and making sure it's strong for the future. Uh, it's going to be hard to deal with those issues effectively in a campaign when you have this very large distraction. And as going along with what you just mentioned, the words quick and speedy trial have been used by special counsel Jack Smith. How soon would you like to see this case come to trial? How soon, realistically, do you think it possibly could come to trial? Well, it's important for America that this come to trial speedily. And we have a federal speedy trial law that says a case has to be tried within 70 days, but there's all kinds of exceptions for it, for motions and and for understandable delays. Uh, this case is going to be longer than usual, again, because you're dealing with classified information. So I'm doubtful that it's going to be resolved within a year. Uh, and so the question is, is whether it's even going to be resolved uh, before the election itself. So this hangs over America. And it's important to remember that, it, that not just the defendant needs a speedy trial, but the public needs a speedy trial. The nation does particularly whenever this is a shadow that hangs over uh, our country and uh, it's hard for us to deal with who's going to be the next commander in chief of our country uh, with this kind of distraction. So I hope the course will move it along fairly but speedily. So when news of this indictment came down, um, you were one of the first few and only Republicans to come out and say that the former president should end his bid um, for the presidency, for the good of the country. Um, and since then, we've heard from him personally saying, you know, I'm not going to drop out of this race. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, we've also heard some of your Republican rivals say that should they be elected, they will pardon him. Um, and so you hear kind of murmurs of that going on. If it didn't take two um, impeachments, if it didn't take January 6th, if it didn't take all of these um, legal woes that he's now facing, knowing the people that you know and having the relationships that you do, is there anything that will um, sway your Republican colleagues um, to feeling differently? Or will, is there a rift already causing um, you know, some problems in the Republican Party? Well, I've been encouraged, actually, that in the last few days, uh, both candidates uh, but also uh, Republican leaders are taking this more seriously and expressing that. They've read the indictment. They understand that a military officer is going to go to prison without any question whenever you handle classified information in this fashion. And so I think we are taking it more seriously, and that will grow. 
even among uh, the voters as they see uh, what this means and the consequences of it and the risk to a nation. You mentioned the potential of a pardon. There's nothing that should be further from a discussion in a political campaign than talking about a pardon under these kind of facts, under any facts. It's very juvenile to suggest that we ought to be talking about who we're going to pardon as candidates for president. That's a misuse of the pardon power. Uh, it should have no place in a campaign or a serious discussion of the office of president. Republican presidential candidate Asa Hutchinson, thank you so much for your time this morning. And of course, we hope to talk to you again soon.